Hey guys. Um, so I'm just going to tell you guys a little about my testimony. I was born and raised in the church. I love the whole like theme you did. This is like my life. Like <laughs> this is exactly what happened. Um, my my theme scripture is um, for God has not given me a spirit of fear, but of love, power, and a sound mind. Um, I don't know. I just knew that scripture when I got saved. I think it was my mom would say scriptures in the car when I was driving when I was little, and it just caught on. <laughs> but. Um, I, I was always very curious to how the heck do you not have fear? Um, well, my story is I was born and raised in the church. My dad's a pastor. My whole life I was born as a pastor's kid, was labeled as a PK. Um, didn't really know God for myself. I went to a Christian school called Christian Academy. And um, so all my friends were saved. Everyone I knew was saved. I don't think I knew anyone who wasn't saved other than my Christians, I mean my cousins, but they they said that they were saved too. And um, so, you know, I I didn't know what it meant. I didn't know what the world was like. My mom would tell me heaven and hell. You don't want to, you know, even touch with the world because then you're going to go to hell. And I would be freaking out all the time because I didn't want to go to hell. She would like describe it to me. So I think she had the term of like freaking me out. <laughs> And um, so I went to school, um, didn't, I was worshiping a God I didn't know. And um, I would sing songs. I, you know, homework was read the Bible, do Bible journals. Um, didn't understand a single thing. Went to Sunday school. And then when I was 16, I begged my mom, please can I be homeschooled? I wanted to pursue my surfing career. <laughs> which that went nowhere. Um, and I, um, she, you know, the, oh my gosh, God bless my mom. She's so gracious and she just let go and she let me do homeschool. And I got my, ended up getting my GED. I didn't do homeschool. I got into the world. I got raped at the age of 16, dated all the wrong boys, um, was abused, um, Got into sex, drugs, alcohol. I mean, every night um, we would drink every single night to five in the morning. Um, got a DUI. Um, I wasn't even of age. Um, was tormented um, by the things of this world. Um, I was obsessed with my Instagram. I wanted to um, be someone I wasn't. Um, I wanted to, to everyone to know that I wasn't a PK. Um, I was obsessed with trying to um, be skinny because I wanted to be the next, um, you know, model or, you know, and I, I was doing cocaine. I had a um, thing called bulimia for six years. And my mom would send me to the doctors. Um, no one could fix me because the world can't fix us only God can and I um you know I was it was so bad that I was throwing up blood um I was going you know I had the doctors were saying if you don't stop you're gonna get or or what is it called or ulcers I can't even say <laughs> please there's um ulcers in my stomach and I knew I wanted to stop but I couldn't it was like programmed in my mind. And I, um, at night I would have, um, anxiety. So I couldn't sleep. I had to smoke weed every single night. It was really bad. Um, until I hit rock bottom, um, I wanted to kill myself. I was so over this life. And I don't think my mom knew this, um, because I got a DUI. She was driving. I worked in Waikiki because I wanted to irritate my parents. <laughs> I worked in Waikiki, so because I had DUI, I couldn't drive. So my mom would pick me up from work and drive me, and I would, wouldn't finish work till like 2 in the morning because I was a server at a restaurant. And she would come all the way and pick me up. And, and it was weird because she wasn't preaching to me anymore. And she was she would say, I love you. I'm so proud of you. She wouldn't do anything, you know. She would smile at me. She wouldn't read me the Bible. You know, I was really confused. And um, that night that I wanted to kill myself, um, 
I was really drunk. I, I think it was five in the morning. My mom picked me up. Um, the next day we had church and my dad, you know, he invited me to come to church. And I, I was like, okay, God, I, if I don't believe you're real because I've never seen you, I've never heard you. Um, where were you for me? Like, why does my parents love you so much? All I knew Christianity to be was religion. (laughs) Why should I believe in a God that I've never seen? I've never experienced. He's not saved me. Okay, if if this is life, then then there's got to be something better. Because if not, then I don't care. I don't even know if if I go to hell. Then who cares? Because this life is hell. Um, I my um I went to church that day. Um, we had a special speaker. Long story short, I ended up going to the altar. Um, I could feel this present. I could feel like as if someone was standing behind me. And, um, but I looked back, no, no one was behind me. And I, I just, my heart dropped in my stomach. And I just knew that I knew that I knew that I had to go up there. I went up there and I mean, I was crying. I mean, it may have happened to a lot of you. I mean, just crying at the altar and all my aunties and uncles was praying for me and that very moment, that very moment, and this is what changed my life. I had an encounter with Jesus. And um, the worship was playing, um, but I didn't hear a single sound. And you know when you close your eyes and you see black, I saw white. And he, I just heard nothing. It was like I wasn't in my body and and there was it was all white and I just saw this hand and this bright light and his voice so clearly and he says are you done running yet and I literally was like oh my gosh you are real there is heaven there is hell my mom and dad were right but but honestly was I am done this is just what am I doing that day I got delivered from drugs and alcohol. I didn't ch- touch drugs ever again. Um, I, but I was not delivered from my bulimia. Um, a couple of days um, later, um, I was like, okay, I'm going to try this Christian thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to listen to this Christian music. And I was in the shower. And um, God told me, I want you to delete your Instagram because you you that is a root to your insecurity, your bulimia, your um, everything. Um, and I, I was like, oh my gosh, no ways. <laughs> I have like 5,000 followers and I get 500 <laughs> likes on all my pictures. I am not deleting my Instagram. This is where I get my, my, my identity from. And then I realized what I was saying. <laughs> Scary. And, and then um, he said, I want you to quit your job. And I want you to stop throwing up because it's not, it's you. It's you who's doing this to yourself. And I was like, oh, that's going to be really hard, God. I don't think I can do that. You know, when we say, God, I give you everything, I'll I'll do it. And you come to the altar and you say, yeah, I lay my life down. And then he tells you to do certain things. And then it's like, oh, I don't know if I can do that, God. And uh, as I was in the shower um, you guys know the song Oceans? Such an amazing song, right? I heard it for the first time playing on my laptop in the shower and this wind went in my shower and I fell on my knees and I started to cry. And I just, he spoke to me and he said, I'm baptizing you. And I, he said, my grace is sufficient for you in your weakness because in your weakness, I am made strong. Because when we're weak, he's supposed to be strong. We're supposed to be weak. We're supposed to be weak. We're supposed to say, I can't do this because then he can intervene. And and so long story short, I, I got out of the shower. I deleted my Instagram. I gave my two weeks put into my job that day. And that same week, I decided to stop throwing up. I, I used to take Dolclax pills because, I mean, it was so bad. I was just, my body was, I was skinny. I didn't have any 
nutrients in my body, I threw it down the toilet, those pills, and I said, God, I, I trust in you. And I um, started to go on these walks with God. And um, he, I knew, so I was like, okay, after I eat, I'm going to go on these walks and I'm going to start listening to Christian music, worship music. Yeah. You know, not even realizing I was going to meet God there and encounter him. And I, so I started going on these walks and I, all of a sudden, I felt so light. And the presence of God filled every part of my body. And in a month, I got delivered from bulimia. And I have not touched that lifestyle ever again. And I I will not stop until, and this is what I was telling at Aunt Chapel, was that there's something when we say yes to God. And there's a song I really like. It says, it says, there's a yes in our hearts that carries through eternity. Simple obedience changes history. And I, I, I love this scripture where it says, the eyes of the Lord goes to and, looks to and fro, looking for those whose hearts are loyal, for him to give strength to. I want to be that one. I want to be that one who will say, yes, God, I know that my yes will change history. If I can just tell people, if I can be a voice to those and say, hey guys, it was hard. Yeah, I fought because our weapons are not against flesh and blood, but it's against principalities, powers, and darkness. I had to fight the principalities and powers. But you know, just like what Pastor Mike was preaching about, I have allowed God's perfect love to cast out all my fears. All of it. I literally do not have any fear. I mean, yeah, it comes back here and there, but then he who is in me is greater than he who is in the world because I abide in him in the vine. And I produce fruit because I'm attached to the vine. And the vine and this fruit that I, I, I bear is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, self-control faithfulness there's one more i can't think of it right now <laughs> but you know god is so good and i we all can do this we it's easy if i can do it everyone can do it because if you ask my mom she would never think this would have ever happened because it had to be the finger of god and he wants to take you deeper and just like pastor mike said Every time you get closer to God, it's like you become less, less, and less, and less. And I just want to say this. I was telling, I was talking to one of our other teachers, Auntie Steph at um, Pacram, and I was telling her, man, I just, I just want to go through this process already. Like, can we just go through this process? There's so much things, you know, and I, I just want to get there so I can be used by God. I, f I just have so much to say. And she said, you know, Carla, every day that I, I, you know, God uses me, I never feel ready, but yet he still uses me. I don't think we ever are supposed to feel ready. We're never supposed to feel ready. And that was like, whoa, because he's going to use you. He used a donkey. He used a fish. <laughs> he's going to use us, whether we want to or not.